Right, time now to meet our final guest on the Christmas show this year. And do you know what? It wouldn't be Christmas without this guy, Terry Hooley. How are you, sir? I'm very well, Robin. I always know when it's time to get the tree down from the loft <laughs> when I come in to do your Christmas show. <laughs> this is becoming an annual event. It is. Three years in a row you've done it now. Yeah. yeah? Time just flies, doesn't it? Four, well, if four years ago I was in hospital at this time. You were, exactly, <laughs> yes. Dying. Yeah, but you survived. I survived. And uh, you've got a big birthday coming up, I believe. 70th, I can't believe it, because in the 60s the doctors told me if I didn't stop partying and start to behave, that I would never live to see 30. Yeah. And they told me I'd never live to see 40. <laughs> And it told me I'd never live to see 50, and at 50 I decided to have another child and not listen to him. You seem to have been as busy as ever this year, and I see you've been DJing not just here, but DJing all over the world. You've been flying all over yeah, the place, Yeah, well, I'm, I can't fly uh, like I used to. Yeah. But I did get to do DJ in the Paradiso just recently in Amsterdam, wow. which is a very famous rock venue that I had never been to. Although I have CDs that were recorded there and stuff, and I have friends who fly over to gigs there all the time. And they invited me to go over and do DJ in Amsterdam and do some podcasts and stuff. And then they found out that the undertones were going to be playing the parodies. So, so I got in touch with the parodies. So I went out and I had a great night. Brilliant. Mind the audience just looked at me and went, who's, who's this old guy <laughs> bouncing about the stage to punk numbers? <laughs> I had a great time, and uh, but it was bizarre because Claire and I got off at the airport, and then there's these guys filming us walking through the airport in the taxi, going to a place like this where we did a po where I did a podcast. It was all pretty bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> so where, where, where's the weirdest place you've ever played? Because you played Russia as well, didn't you? Well, this time uh, Russia was fantastic. Yeah, they built the. Uh, I got barred from Russia, <laughs> so it did, because I inspired punks and gay people, apparently. I, but I behaved myself. Uh, they built the bar for a week called uh, the Hooligan after my book, and they only sold Guinness and Irish whiskey, and it <laughs> suited me fine. And uh, it was fantastic, so it was, uh, and I did DJ in it, and uh, it was brilliant. It was the best time of my life. Brilliant. And I didn't want to come back to Belfast. <laughs> But I was at a party in, in the Irish Embassy for St. Patrick's Day and uh, Putin's thugs told me that uh, I never need apply for a, a visa again because uh, I inspired people. Right, so you're not going to... The wrong to kind of people. <laughs> okay. So, but I, I had the best time. I didn't want to come back to Belfast. It was the first time I'd ever been away and I didn't really want to come back to Belfast. Wow. So, now, I suppose when you're DJing in the run-up to Christmas, one of the songs you have to play for the punters is uh, The Pogues and uh, Kirsty McCall. No, I'd rather be, although Shane McGowan, and I did bring him over for his first gig ever in Ireland. Uh, Shane and I are old friends. No, Christmas Baby, Please Come Home, My Darling Love is oh, my, my all-time favourite record and has been since the 60s. I, I, I hate the way Christmas starts earlier and earlier and like, is it six weeks ago that they had a channel on TV just playing Christmas movies all, all day? Didn't and it? bad Christmas movies. Yes, when you think of Christmas dreadful, movies, dreadful. you want to see It's a Wonderful Life. A wonderful Life. You want to yes. see Home Alone. Yes. You want to see Die Hard. La the other day I was watching a movie, Jordy, which I, in this January one year, I was going along, playing out in the entry, and there was a, people were throwing their Christmas trees out after Christmas, and there was a silver sixpence stuck on a bit of sellotape and I was seven years of age and I asked my mum could I go to the Strand Picture House to see see a film. I said certainly son and I went and I seen Geordie and then I watched it the other day and no funny how tricks yeah. your memory plays tricks I always thought it was in black and white <laughs> so in my memory but it was actually in colour. Yeah right we've got to talk about the biggest uh, theatre production of the year I'm probably the only person in the country who hasn't seen it but uh, good well, vibrations at the you Lyric. You couldn't get a ticket for Love No uh, Money. I couldn't get end. a ticket. Can you Nobody believe can that? Get Nobody a get a ticket for it. I had to buy tickets for friends coming over from Europe and all. So I had it at the beginning. Yeah. And uh, normally my guest list, they say there's two things from outer space. You can see it's Terry Hooley's guest list <laughs> and the Great Wall of China. <laughs> But there wasn't a big guest list for this. But uh, So how much input did you have into the theatre show? Not a lot. 
I went along and talked to him, went out drinking my cast, and got on okay. Yeah. They're great people. Yeah. I'd met Des Kennedy, the, the producer was over. He came over twice from New York because he was in charge of uh, Harry Potter, Potter and the Cursed Child, which they won a Tony Award. Uh, and Des had cancelled twice. And I thought all these people live in, theatre people live in La La Land. So I thought, well, we'll do it, we'll try this again on third strikes, and then I just can't be bothered to meet him. And we went along, we had lunch, and he put up, I thought we got on fairly well, he put up on Facebook that he had never laughed at, at as much as my silly stories <laughs> about my ridiculous life, and uh, his jaw was hurting. So I knew that we got on pretty well. And then I went along to, well, he brought some of the cast over to the house one, one night, and uh, I met Curry Quinn, who I quite liked. Uh, who nearly played your wife who, who in it, but then she went But then she got offered Coronation yeah. Street with a lot of money. <laughs> and I went, yeah, take it, take it. <laughs> Don't be turning it down. And, but then Neve Perry uh, was absolutely brilliant. And I met Aaron, and he, he over the house, and he, and he was great. He said he couldn't get a word in. How do you think he did playing you? I thought he did brilliantly. I did say to him, don't be trying to copy Richard Dormer like in the film and don't have a beard. And Aaron was brilliant. Yeah. Everybody in the cast was brilliant. Normally I'm used to working with bands and there's always one person in the band who, who spoils it for everybody else. But there was nobody in that cast that I didn't love and it was brilliant. And they all enjoyed it and, and it was such a success. And there's talk of it coming to Dublin next August and also back again in the Lyric in September. Brilliant, good stuff. And uh, maybe maybe traveling other places. And Claire said to Des, did you know that it was going to be a hit? He says, I, I, I did. Yeah. And I wish they had told me, because I was, <laughs> the first time, I, I went to see it three times, the first time I cried all the way through it, second time I cried and I laughed, and the third time I just, really enjoyed it good stuff well it seems that the good vibrations will go on forever and ever and ever it seems to be i thought when we, we were doing all those things 40 years ago that nobody had ever remembered anything that that we did and but there's still a fanatical following for good vibrations i mean and that's the one thing i was worried about about the punks how they would see it as a play but, but they loved it yeah. because they're very precious about the history of what happened at that time. Some of them a lot more precious than I would be. But uh, a lot of them had never been to the theatre before. And it, was, it, was a, it opened a whole new world to them. Good stuff. Well, Terry, we're out of time already. Just that was quick. That was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> so uh, thank you for joining us. Well, thanks again for asking me, Robin. Have yourself a great Christmas and a happy birthday as well. Right. Thank you very much.